Yo, I am super pumped to be back right now. You know what? It's been about a couple weeks since I've made any videos here for our YouTube channel via chess.com. And uh, I am just pumped to be here to continue our series on how to play chess openings. And uh, we're going to continue with our subject of the Open Sicilians. In case you've forgotten, this is International Master Daniel Wrench. And uh, hopefully that voice is ringing loud enough in your ears that you can't even get it out of your head at night. And it's driving you to insanity or a diamond membership on chess.com. Haha, <laughs> very funny, right? Anyway, let's rock and roll here. We're going to flip the board as we... Uh, Move into our discussions. We're going to start with the move order two knight to c6, and after d4 takes takes, as you can see from the title of this video, we are here today to discuss the Taimanov and the Khan Sicilians. We've grouped them into the same video because the structure, the pawn structure, is the same for the majority of players, probably even up to about 1800 tournament play ratings. Understanding positions based on the pawn structure and ideas is even more important than understanding the theoretical, uh, be best considered theoretical moves by, let's say, the top players in the world. So uh, we're going to group these two openings as we did with the Dragon and Accelerated Dragon under the same uh, video here. So the, the thing about the Pulsen systems, as I call them, the Pulsen Sicilians, they were even referred to, I believe, as the Pelican Sicilians uh, some time ago, um, that being the most popular two, being the Taimanov and the Khan, is that both involve this move E6. And whenever you combine pushing the E pawn with the obvious advancement of the C pawn, given that you're playing an open Sicilian, correct? You're inherently taking a risk via the weakening of your dark squares. And you will notice that, um, though it is not that simple, and that would be an oversimplification of, of what's really going on here in these openings, you will notice that when white is successful, certain things tend to happen. And, and, and those things might be that black's dark squares are exposed or weakened or neglected in some way by black. Um, in many cases, of course, black is, is, is doing what he does in almost every Sicilian, which is trying to play for a6, trying to develop a minority attack on the queen side, trying to use the space and open lines that he's been given to do so. Um, obviously, the c-file being involved in that, hopefully, eventually with a rook. And uh, black would like to create counterplay on the queen side, as we've said, he does in uh, just about every Sicilian. So after the move e6 and the move knight to c3 is played, typically the move queen to c7 is played here, though a6 can also be played um, and, and transposed into a time on off. In some cases, a six allows a move order where white may consider capturing on c6 here um, as as capturing with the d pawn would would not lead to a favorable position for for black ruining his castle uh, but we're not going to talk too much about that theory here instead we're going to go with queen to c7 and simply point out that a move like knight to b5 gaining a tempo on the queen can quickly backfire because without immediate access into black's dark squares white's not achieving very much with that move and of course as we know from every sicilian black is going to play a6 next and kick this pony back to his uh, rightful place. And in doing so, he'll have gained back his lost time with the queen. Perhaps you could argue even gaining more important time as it helps him to quickly play the move b5. So after queen to c7, the most commonly played move order nowadays is bishop to e3. And after a6, we have officially reached a time on of Sicilian. Now, as as we um, have done in all of the uh, videos here on, on particular opening subjects, we're, we're going to focus on the key points and try to highlight for you some of the most important principles and, and fundamental ideas, because obviously we cannot discuss all the theory. So what I'd like to do is go over a couple of the main lines, try to give you a summary here of what the most popular approach is for white and obviously um, summarize Black's ideas along the way. After the move a6, the most common move order these days is actually the move queen to d2, uh, which um, during the uh, beginning part of the uh of the 21st century was was in, for many players considered a mistaken move order after knight f6 castles long bishop to b4 it seems as though this pin here combined with the pressure and threat of knight takes e4 was too much for white to deal with after f3 and d5 a simple capture would allow black a big advantage immediately destroying white's queen side making him regret castling long and in many cases it looks like you know let's say after some sort of simple move anything like this destroying destroying black's uh Black, sorry, destroying white's queen side is going to leave, leave black with a very strong attack. Obviously, there's also options of, of eliminating white's dark square bishop. However, uh, when they discovered that this position is actually nothing for white to worry about after a3 captures, captures, white can actually make a sacrifice of this e pawn and follow that with a capture on c6 and immediate access into the dark squares, gaining um, tremendous, in fact, we would say even winning compensation for the pawn. Um, so after the move knight to c5, 
and the knight goes back this way, preventing that idea. White can still capture on c6 and develop an attack on uh, black's dark squares here. And something you'll notice in many mainline time monarchs and cons is that when black gives up this dark square bishop, that bishop that originally starts on f8, for just about any piece, regardless of the compensation he gets, he is always taking a big inherent risk on his dark squares. For example, if black is to castle long here, the move bishop h6 comes in, threatening checkmate and at least winning the exchange back. And if a move g6 is conceded, we can see that white will have compensation against these weakened holes for, for the rest of the game. This is like Swiss cheese, you know, those cartoons you see with the big cheese and the, you know, Tom and Jerry always fighting over it, right? So, uh, yeah, that's right, a Tom and Jerry reference in a chess video. Eat your heart out, kids. After the move a6, queen to d2, that's one mainline move order. The best approach for black can be to develop the attack on the queen side, but rather than trying to expose the pin, simply playing moves like castles or b5 and continue with regular Sicilian plans, trying to attack, um, use his minority attack for a checkmate attack. Another approach for white is simply the move bishop to d3, and often after this move and the other move you're about to see, the, the plan is very simple. White wants to castle short and, and use the other plan to expose the time honor structure, which is developing an attack with the f and e pawns on the king side, usually after f4, hoping for e5 and opening this bishop for play on the, on the uh, king side. After the move, bishop e3, a6, bishop e2, this was, this was right here, was a classical, was, was, a, was a main line for some time, uh, considered the most popular way for both sides to play, this classical main line, where black would bring out this bishop. Again, we see this pressure here on the c3 knight, combined with threats on the e4 and d5 squares as a way for, uh, for black to get immediate pressure on the center. However, after the move knight a4, exclaim of Iach, black is unable to take this pawn due to a trick that involves capturing on c6, regardless Regardless of how black takes it, we're going we're gonna to put this knight on b6 and bring our queen up to d4, applying pressure on all different types of points. Um, and when you combine that with threats of bishop f3, pinning the knight, as well as the rook simply coming to the d-file, white's position is actually overwhelming. Um, so after the move knight a4, black will typically just retreat this bishop, and uh, this type of play where, where white goes out of his way to try to eliminate the, the light square bishop on c8 and then continue to put pieces on the dark squares um, is a way for white to play. Again, black's plan at some point either being to play on the queen side with a minority attack or try to organize the move d5, which inherently would take away some of the threats against his dark squares by extending the structure. Back to the beginning, we talk about the con Sicilian. And in this case, we play a different move order. The Taimano Sicilian can be reached via the move order with two knight to c6 and then e6, or via the move order with two e6 and followed by knight to c6. But the con itself can only be reached via the move order with e6 followed by a6, as in many types of cons, black is actually not choosing to develop this knight to c6, instead going for a more uh, flexible development of the knight. In many cases, it will come to d7. So after the move a6, white has two main approaches, either to play knight to c3, where the plan is actually very similar to what we've already discussed in one line of the time on off, essentially to develop castle king side and try to get an attack going with the f and e pawn advances, at some point, of course, trying to expose black's dark squares. As we know, inherently, black has to be careful about ideas of, of going after this knight here, as in many cases, even the win of this pawn would not be able to fully compensate for the potentially very, very weak dark squares once this guy gets developed. So after the move a6, knight to c3, often queen to c7, bishop d3, you can see black now go back to knight to c6 as he can take with the queen, not having to take with the pawn. You'll also see the moves like b5, trying to develop a minority attack and fianchetto this bishop, and you'll also see knight f6. Essentially, in any game, you will actually see a combination of all those things. The move order, particularly black plays, may be based on some sort of theoretical idea or preparation of his own, but all of those ideas are how black is playing in the con against this uh, knight to c3 with bishop d3 plan and castling short with f4 coming. The other idea for white being bishop d3 immediately allows them of bishop to c5 to put pressure on the knight, but after knight to b3 there are two main lines for black with the move bishop a7 running into usual ideas of a Maroxy bind followed by the trade of this bishop on a7, usually developing the knight to c3 and in most cases castling short. The move with bishop e7 doesn't seem to, uh, to make as uh, natural sense to develop the bishop and then retreat it, but black deems it in his best interest to remove this knight from the strong post. However, here often white will develop the queen to g4, inducing black to make a weakening move on the king side, punishing him in a sense for developing this bishop so early 
from this square that protected the pawn. And after the queen retreats, you'll often see the game head down play something like this, with uh, both sides developing their pieces and eventually white once again trying to go back to the f4 plan of trying to organize some sort of effective pawn push at the right time and uh, black usually not worrying too much about the dark squares in an immediate sense but obviously having obviously having to deal with that potential weakness down the road okay i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the summary of these two sicilians that essentially concludes our coverage of the uh open sicilians here um for our YouTube channel via chess.com and uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around on chess.com.